Hazard Pay is back on, baby. In the third Simmons package, there's a $1,500 Hazard Pay. But what happened about that $10,000 Hazard Pay from 2020? In this Overnight LA video, I explain Hazard Pay, who are essential workers, and how you get it. Enjoy this Overnight LA video on Hazard Pay. Hazard pay heats up, but how soon can you get that $10,000? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Afternoons LL8. Hope you're good and safe. This is our two-hour programming block. Every day, this starts with a check at 3.30. Then goes to Hazard Pay, next FPUC, and finally, Rent Assistance. It's been really an incredible 24 hours in which we had a great announcement, good news from the president about a stimulus, and then included references to Hazard Pay. Yes, but what was it? How did it work? And when will you or will you get that $10,000 under hazard pay? Let me get right to the news. A lot of people have been asking me in DM and tweets on the channel and comments, when can I get that $10,000 of hazard pay? It's not law yet, so you can't get it. Let me make very clear to you. It's not a program that is currently live. So I love that viewers are on top of things, but it's not currently live yet. It's not yet law. It's a proposal in the HEROES Act, authored by the Democrats, approved by the House, currently in the Senate. There is no indication as to what day it's going to become law, but it's part of the second stimulus package, which is channel details on a regular basis. Next, viewers ask, can I, when can I go apply? With the I, you know, very clearly delineated in the question. No. No, you can't apply. What do you mean I can't apply? You can't apply. What's my money? You can't apply. The one of the real big rubs that people have an issue with, including myself, this is the what the hell news, is why does uh, Hazard Pay have the employer apply for your money? Yes, the way the Democrats wrote the bill, which no one likes, including the viewers of this channel and including other Republicans who want to give you Hazard Pay money, is that employers shall or may apply for Hazard Pay for you. What does that mean, LLA? It means that they don't have to. Yes, they literally do not have to apply for hazard pay for you. You cannot apply for it yourself. Well, what if they don't apply for me? Tough luck. Yes, literally tough luck. What is there? Is there a manner in which I can sue my employer if I can't, if they don't get the hazard pay for me? Viewers have asked, no. The law actually says, well, not the law, the bill proposes law, says they don't have to do it if they don't want to. Yeah. Who creates and writes a law that says the employer can sort of, if they want to, go get your money that's not their money, and it's $10,000 that's not going to them, it's, it's going to you. That's the what the hell part of the bill. Where in this, let's be frank, drop in the comments below. How many of you really think that your employer is going to go out and get you $10,000 that doesn't make them a penny? I'd like to see the responses Ultimately, that doesn't even take into consideration other problems. Your employer may be bankrupt now. Your employer may have laid you off. Your employer may have terminated your services. Your employer may be out of money. Your employer may be out of business. Uh, there's all that other stuff. So how does that happen in that circumstance? Arguably, it doesn't. One of the viewers, um, who's one of my mentors in the private, asked me, you know, a few hours ago, he said, how do I apply if I'm self-employed? Not clearly defined in the bill as well. Not clear in the bill as well if you're self-employed. Now, I explained before in an earlier video, because I've been doing hazard pay videos for now, what, two months, where I had a lot of truck drivers. I said, this is going to be a big issue for my truck drivers because they're not employees. So who applies for the truck driver? The person who hired their services? That sounds really weird. So if I order it, if I order a car to be shipped across the country, you know, hire a truck driver and they drive it across the country, I'm supposed to get their hazard pay for them? What? It doesn't make sense. Now Mitt Romney saw there was problems with this. It's sometimes, you know, 
sometimes Mitt Romney's like the Candy Burris of the, of the Senate. He's like, there's a problem with this. I'm like the voice of reason. Do you not see the problem in this? I'm like, there's an elephant in the room, and it's not Nene. There's an elephant in the room, and like, there's a problem here. Don't you see there's a problem? There's an inherent big problem with this bill. It's just like there's always a problem on Atlanta Housewives. There's a big problem with this bill, and the problem is that the bill says the employer may apply for and he doesn't want to apply. Mitt Romney cures that problem. He fixes that problem. How does he fix the problem? In his proposal. His proposal is that the employer will, must, has to apply for you. How does he get around that? He doesn't give you as much money, which is, you know, it's better than nothing. But what he does is he has the federal government pay the employer to get your money. Yes. Now, if you think about it, if you think about it, will an employer sit back? Let's just think about this for a second. Will an employer sit back and say, okay, January to the present, I have to calculate hazard pay. I have you know, 20 employees. I have to do timesheets of 10 months of work or eight months of, of salaries for 20 employees. That's going to take me like four days of bookkeeping. You want me to do that federal government for free? As he fixes his collar, the boss. I'm not doing that for free. Don't jump a leg. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit and do calculations for five days, six days, and have my bookkeeper run up a bill for me, and no one pays my bill to do that bookkeeper. I'm not gonna do that for free. I expect that to happen. Now, you know. I try to keep things positive on this channel, as you know. I try to keep it motivated and insp inspirational. But I'm seeing a lot of questions from viewers asking me, when do you think I will receive my hazard pay? I got to take this very clear to you, this message right now. So look at me. You look, we see each other, as Kenny would say as well. We see each other. Uh, it's one thing for the bill to be passed. It's one thing for the bill to be passed. It's another one from your for your nincompoop boss to not apply for the money. And so I see a huge problem if bosses across the country see this law enacted and suddenly just don't want to apply for it. Protests, riots, walk-offs, union strikes, union lawsuits, <laughs> uh, picketing. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine? It's not, a, it's not a minor amount of money, and it's not a minor amount of people. It's a lot of people. Let's just think about it. Every pharmacy that's a national chain, everyone walk, is not getting hazard pay because the boss didn't want to do it. Every, uh, you know, every grocery store chain in the country, and there's a lot of them, uh, that are nationalized, that are unionized, that have unionized employees, that have a union president, that pay union dues, they're very well organized. Suddenly you're told by that restaurant chain that is national in every single city across the country, we're not applying for your hazard pay. Where do you see this going? <laughs> this afternoon there was protests outside the, the, uh, the person in charge of the post office, the inspector general. There was like 40 people outside that in that protest, if you watch the video. I don't expect 40 people protesting this thing. I expect 40,000 people protesting, or 40, you know, in, in every city. This is a very big issue that if it's approved and people aren't getting the money, something's going to have to be done. Ultimately, I hope that the Mitt Romney plan is enacted. Now, here's what's really strange. <laughs> This is more of what the hell is news. The president issued a statement yesterday among his four tweets or five tweets yesterday that says he now wants to pay hazard pay, but to certain people. Wait, what? Let me get to the message and then I'll get to the backstory. He says, I am ready, doesn't mean he's going to right now, but I'm ready to send more money to the states and local governments to save jobs, to save jobs for police, firefighters, first responders, and teachers. That's all frontline hazard pay workers. So he wants to pay hazard pay money to police, firefighters, first responders, and teachers. That's really good news. But the what the hell news is why was that not in the Republicans' second stimulus package, the HEALS Act, authored by Mitch McConnell? Why is this the first time we're hearing about anything hazard pay-ish, hazard paid-esque, <laughs> hazard pay-ish as, as to the Republicans? On, 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 a, on a Friday afternoon after we've been doing this for, you know, a couple days.
<laughs> just a couple minutes. Why are we suddenly hearing about hazard pay in that regards? We've never heard the word hazard pay come out of Steve Mnuchin's mouth, but we've also never heard of anything from Steve Mnuchin talking about the frontline workers. I mean, you know that because I've made every joke I can make about it. I've called it the illegitimate, chi illegitimate child that no one wants to talk about, the love child of Steve and Nancy Pelosi, the, the hazard pay bill, has a provision of the hazard pay bill. Uh, you know, it is like the thing you don't want to talk about. It's like uh, the person at the table that has a piece of food in their tooth. You just don't want to talk about it. So we haven't heard anything from their side, but then suddenly we have this incredibly great news that he wants to pay it. Okay. And of course, the what the hell news is why is it only firefighters, police, first responders, and teachers? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> As one viewer dropped in the comments this morning, and I'm not disparaging any group or one or the other, they said, What's, why teachers? How about everyone else in the essential workers provision? And that's a very good point. I mean, when you look at the hazard pay bill, essential workers is very broad. There's a lot of categories in there. I've done it before, but it's not just four groups of people. So as we sit here today, it's important to understand that it's $10,000. It's not coming to you tomorrow. It's not coming to you next week. And if it becomes law, it could become a law very quickly. Let me explain how quickly it could become a law. The way it works is that Congress is at home, but they're under order to return within 24 hours if there's a deal between Steve and Nancy who are still talking. They're not no longer talking. They're still talking. They talked yesterday by telephone. Steve is in town. He's not on break because he's a cabinet member. He's not on recess. He's not a, he's not a member of Congress. So within 24 hours of a deal by Steve and Nancy as the second stimulus package, Congress is ordered to return within 24 hours. Senate would vote the first day. Uh, House would vote the next day. The president signed the bill the third day. Great. Hazard pay in three days. No. No. The problem of hazard pay is not the law or the enactment of the law. The problem of hazard pay is that darn boss. Imagine if you had a boss that you worked at a restaurant for. I'm going to use the most common example. You worked at a restaurant from January, because this bill starts in January. You worked at a restaurant as a good employee. You did your work. You did what you had to do. You were January when the pandemic hit. You still was work. You're still working at the restaurant. You were doing helping with takeout and helping with uh, delivering, every, putting everything in the Uber Eats boxes when the guy came to pick it up. You were working there, or you're cleaning the tables, or you're doing something. You were January, February, March, and April. You continued to work and keep that business alive. That boss went and got PPP money and got some money to pay your salaries in April. But by May, the PPP money was run out. By May, there was a new lockdown order, no in-house in dining. Suddenly, people were not showing up. The takeout was not enough business, and you were laid off. The business is now closed. The boss is now gone. The business is shut down. You don't even have the business, the, the boss's home phone number. The phone number of the, of the restaurant is shut off. So how would you get hazard pay for all those months that you worked at the restaurant? This is not an unusual circumstance. I foresee this is the circumstance that this channel is going to be covering, you know, to I'm black and blue in the face, because I think it's a very serious problem. And I don't think anyone who wrote this bill, this, this hazard pay bill, understood how severe the problem is going to be as we hopefully enact the law. Coming up next is more of this as well. Um, go to the front of this channel, hit that subscribe and alert button. I'm giving incredible details all day long. I, I announced two more grants, not my grants, but two more grants that were announced today. Um, whether it's rent assistance or individual grants or free money in a different regards, I'm announcing things literally by the minute. What people are doing, they're sending me messages, hey, Adelaide, here's this, announce it. I look at it, I confirm it's true and correct. I put it out, I announce it right away. So go to the front of this channel and hit that subscribe button and hit that alert button. If you aren't getting, if you are not getting alerts from this channel, look at the sticky comments of this channel below in the comments below this video. It describes how to ensure that you are set up to get alerts. Coming up next is FPUC of really interesting developments, but really great news about rent assistance coming up thereafter. As always, stay informed, stay motivated, stay inspired, and stay LA for more. Hazard pay heats up. But how hazardous is it to be in a room with Mark Meadows?
video was recorded, President Trump issued a series of tweets indicating that stimulus checks, hazard pay, rent assistance, and PPP, among other things, are coming out. First, he said, I directed Steve Mnuchin to get ready to send direct payments, $3,400 for families of four to all Americans. Democrats are holding it up. As to PPP, he said, I'm ready to have Treasury and SBA send out SPPP money to small businesses impacted by China virus. Democrats are holding it up. As to hazard pay, he said, I'm ready to send more money to states and local governments to save jobs for police and firefighters, first responders and teachers. Democrats are holding this up. Then he continued. I'm ready to send an additional $105 billion to states to open schools safely with additional PPP. PPE, Democrats are holding it up. As to rent assistance, I'm ready to send additional rent assistance payments to hardworking Americans that have been hurt by China virus. Democrats are holding this up. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Afternoons LL8. Hope you're great and safe. This is Afternoons LL8. Our programming block that starts every day at 3.30 goes all the way through the check first, then hazard pay, then FPUC, and finally rent assistance. Big news today, as Steve Mnuchin indicated that he made an offer yet again for Nancy Pelosi to come back to the table with more on the table, yes. Steve Mnuchin, uh, we now know via the White House press secretary in a press briefing late yesterday and early this morning, that Nancy, that Steve Mnuchin once again reached out to Nancy Pelosi, 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 uh, and put a bigger stimulus package on the table. So did Ms. Pelosi like the package on the table? Apparently, there was a progressively favorable conversation. What derailed the conversation was Casper the Ghost. <laughs> Casper the Ghost, which is this election funding provision in the second stimulus package or voters' right initi initiative, which doesn't exist in the second stimulus package. Larry Kudlow brought it up on Thursday as well. And broadcast news reporters keep on wondering and keep on asking the White House, what is this thing you're talking about? Let me get right to the details. Hazard pay still remains front and center for viewers of this channel who wonder when, how, and in what regards will you get that $10,000 money? Let me go up over what hazard pay is because I'm getting a lot of great questions overnight and also a little bit of confusion about it. So let me get right to the details. The second stimulus package from the Democrats, which is called the HEROES Act, if you look at online, it's called the HEROES Act. It's actually a bill. It's a PDF. It's pages and pages long. It, you, if you look at the bill, you can actually read the provision. It starts around page 45. It talks about the HEROES Fund. The HEROES Fund provides money to people who worked during the pandemic who are essential workers. Who are essential workers? More about that in a second. How do you get this money? How much money is it? And when would it become law? Now, the first thing I got to tell you very clearly, because I got a lot of these questions is, people overnight said, how can I go get that $10,000 right now? It's not law yet. People ask, how can I go get that hazard pay? It's not law yet. How can I get some of that hazard pay love? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hazard pay hasn't asked you out on a date yet, so just uh, uh, keep it in the pants. It's just, it's just not happening just yet, so don't get too anxious. Very, very anxious viewers. Let me explain to you how it works. It's based upon the number of hours you've worked, and I've had some wonderful viewers who have done these incredible calculations and dropped in the comments. Very simple. Take the number of hours you work starting in January all the way up to the present times that by $13 an hour. You have a number. Now, which numbers, which hours do I include, LLA? Well, you include everything. You include part-time, full-time, overtime, laid off time. Well, what if I, you know, what if this happened at my job? And what if that happened at my job? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you've been laid off, terminated, early retirement, furloughed, came back, left, came back, left, uh, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> got fired, got rehired, got fired again. Doesn't matter. Um, you qualify. What if I had multiple uh, hazard pay jobs? All They all qualify. So this is really great news. Then people ask me about the hourly item. Well, um, I'm a truck driver. I don't work on the hourly. It doesn't matter. Just pull out your hourly slips. I mean, pull out your slips and figure out how many hours it took to do the job. Also really simple. What if I'm an independent contractor covered under the bill? Doesn't matter. Just doesn't have to be an employee. So how do you do the calculation? Well, you do it $13 an hour by the number of hours you get that amount of money. If it's over $10,000, bam, like Emeril Lagasse back in the day, bam, $10,000 in your account. 
what if it's five thousand? Well, it's five thousand dollars if if your two thousand nineteen earnings was over a hundred thousand dollars. So if it's over $100,000, you only get $5,000. If your 2019 earnings was under $100,000, you get $10,000. Well, what if I do the calculation? I'm not at that threshold yet. No problem. You do the calculation. You're only at $8,000. Bam, you get $8,000 now. And going forward, you get $13 an hour. It's all so straightforward. So then from there come usually two questions. Um, am I essential LA late? Or... What about, where do I apply? Let me do the second question first, because that's the easiest question with the worst answer. <laughs> I mean, how can a bill be so great and give you such a bad aftertaste at the end? It's just, this bill does that. It starts so wonderful, and then you get the aftertaste. Here it is. The employer applies for you, not you. Oh, okay, well, you know, my employer will do it. Well, guess what? The employer doesn't have to do it. What? Employer does not have to do it. Well, then, can I force the employer to do it? No. What if the employer doesn't want to do it? You're out, you're deep doo-doo. What are you talking about? Yes, the way the bill is written is really screwy on the back end. It doesn't go down smoothly. It has a bad aftertaste. The employer does not have to apply for you. It's voluntary upon the employer. If they don't apply for you, tough luck. Yes. I don't know if that part of the provision is going to survive. Mitt Romney doesn't want it to survive. The, the senator out of, from the West now, Utah, he's a Republican of all, of all sorts, says, I want hazard pay, but I don't want it this way. I want to require employees to apply for you. He has his, <laughs> he has his uh, mojo right. He says, I want the employer to apply for you, and I'm going to pay the employer to apply for you which makes such great news. The reason why is that this is a lot of bookkeeping. I hate to make it sound nebulous, but it is. Imagine taking all your employees and calculating all their number of hours from January to the present for every single employee and doing it for free. Do employers do things for free? No. Do employees ever do anything when they don't have to? No. Are employees lazy? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah, they're lazy. Mitt, no Mitt Romney sees that problem. He wants to solve the problem in his version of the hero of the, of the hazard pay bill, which is to order the employees to do it and pay them to do it. Give them some money to get your money for you. So, needless to say, every night I get a message at LA, like, can I go get that money? No. Why not? It's not a law, and you can't get it either. What? Yes, it's just like a, it's sort of like a movie that you thought is a romantic comedy, and then suddenly it turns out to a horror flick, and there's a headless ghostman that comes behind the back, behind the door that comes out, and it's like the, it's like, it's like Chuck Schumer with, with Mitch McConnell's head on top of it, with a big piece of steak in it, and it says, I'm Blaine 66 cousin. It's that type of scariness of this bill that starts really good and goes really badly quickly. Ultimately, <laughs> I expect to get to revise, but I don't know when or how, because I see a lot of problems, and I'm not being facetious. I see a lot of problems. Okay, so who's an essential worker? My mom says I'm essential, LA. Well, God bless your mom, but she's not the one who wrote the bill. <laughs> My boss says I'm never essential. Well, go tell your boss to jump in a lake. He's not the one writing the bill, but he is the one applying for the money. Uh, the bill clearly defines who are essential workers. And ultimately, a lot of viewers um, understand those classifications, which are based upon not what you're doing, your task, but the industry. So uh, I always use the example of a pharmacy. It says the HEROES Act that a pharmacy's workers are essential workers. That means the person who cleans the floor at the pharmacy is an essential worker as much as the pharmacist. It doesn't matter that your job classification is um, cleaning person. You are still a essential worker because you're in the pharmacy. Ironically, if you are the cleaning person in a law firm, you're not essential because law firms are not essential. If you are, um, let me give you another example. If you uh, sell liquor in a, in a retail store, you're not an essential worker. But if you own a convenience store or you work in a convenience store, which is ostensibly another, which is another version of saying the word liquor store, you're an essential worker. You work behind the cash register and you're giving people booze. 
you know, give Mitch some, give some Mitch some extra booze, please. Uh, you're an essential worker. Now, I understand booze is essential for a lot of people, but a lot of people are not happy with the essential worker classifications, which are uh, everyone who is shipping and handling, everyone who's drivers, Uber, Lyft, taxi drivers, bus drivers, all essential, all aerospace, all essential, all um, um, nurses, anything medical, whether it's in the in in the hospital outpatient at the home patient all anything medical or assisted living nursing physical therapy anything that's medical or medical related all essential it's very well defined in the bill even dentists are essential um that's like a married to medicine in atlanta see you're not a doctor you're a dentist uh all essential next um Anyone in a grocery store, all essential. Anyone in a restaurant is all essential. Anyone in a convenience store, all essential. So where is the bad area? You know, well, the bad area is anyone that's excluded, not included. General professional services, not included. You know, architect, not included. Contractors, not included. Electricians and plumbers, not included. And I gotta tell you, I've seen some comments from viewers in the comments. Here's, here's an example. In Los Angeles County, when the pandemic hit and we had the lockdown issued, it said in the LA County health ordinances, which are codified in the city and the municipality level as well, contractors are essential, plumbers are essential, electricians are essential. Not in this bill. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not in the bill. No way. Um, maintenance workers, meaning cleaning people, all essential. Yes, um, security guards, all essential. So there you go. So when would we see this hazard pay money and how would it work and when would you get it? Well, we know how it's gonna work, but when would you see the money? It depends on the love fest, the courtship of Nancy Pelosi, debuting on Lifetime this, you know, hopefully on Monday it's debuting. Uh, the courtship of Nancy Pelosi improved overnight as Steve Mnuchin said that he put more of his stimulus package on the table. He put a bigger stimulus package on the table after Nancy Pelosi yesterday started the day by saying his stimulus package is too small and then continued the day by saying he's bragging about his stimulus package being bigger than it is is actually a much, much smaller amount. Now I gotta tell you I looked at her purple purple um, chart, her purple poster, I can't even say the word, purple purple poster. Say that really fast. That's really hard to say. Uh, and th which matched my shirt yesterday. And her numbers on the poster didn't match where they were, I think, but I'm not, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be shady. I'm not trying to dig, but I think she, her numbers on that poster were numbers that Mnuchin had offered at the start of the negotiations, not where they ended up. Um, you know, whatever pitch you want to make, I got it. But, um, Ultimately, what was the deal breaker to get you the hazard pay was that $1 trillion bailout of states on anywhere from Monday to last Friday. But yes, but but Thursday, Larry Kudlow, late Thursday, Steve Mnuchin, again today, the White House is now not talking about the state bailouts. It's now talking about um, voter rights and a election funding provision. You know, I just don't know what's going on here because there's no such thing in the second stimulus package. Do they have another draft that no one has seen? I mean, it's just not in there. Um, the White House press secretary says Fe Nancy Pelosi has been fundamentally unserious, um, asking for a $3.5 billion with a B for election funding. Um, well, I mean, first of all, that's un categorically untrue. Because let me read the sentence to you again. Nancy Pelosi's asking three three point five billion for election funding. I mean, it's just not true. We have the data. She doesn't have it in there. Um, and then yet Larry Kudlow yesterday said there's a voter rights initiative in the bill that's billions of dollars. It's not in there as well. So I mean, can we? <laughs> I just can't. Can we agree upon what's in the package? If, it's, if you don't know what's in the package, let's take a closer look. I mean, you may need a magnifying glass, Nancy, but I mean, we can we just take a look a closer look at what's in there? Because now we're saying we're not agree upon things that just aren't there, which means that we're closer to a deal if people realize what they're actually arguing about. Uh, but Minutia made another offer of compromise to come to the table with a bigger package, and Nancy was excited but not yet at the table. If you watched my video earlier today, I indicated to you why that's likely to happen, why it's likely they're gonna come back. Uh, good news across the board, not great news. A little bit of what the hell news. <laughs>
or his donut guy says, it's not news until I get my donut. Well, yeah, uh, here's a donut. I, I We don't have the donuts from Nancy and Chuck just yet, or Nancy and Stevie. Um, coming up next is FPUC with really um, big news today about where unemployment is going. If you watch Morning's LA Lake, which is a blockbuster right off the bat, um, I explained to you how you could be getting tens of thousands of dollars right now. And so I don't want you to be sitting around for that $1,200 a second stimulus check, which when you could be getting tens of thousands of dollars right now on unemployment assistance. So coming up with that and then rent assistance. If you haven't, go to the front of this channel where there's a subscribe button. There's a little subscribe button with a little alert. Please hit that because this situation is changing ever so quickly. Um, I want you to be alert and informed uh, from me, and there's a way for me to communicate through what's basically like a text messaging sort of functionality of this website, which is so great. So Steve and Nancy are spotted, you know, hugging outside a, uh, a conference room on a Saturday afternoon. Bam, I'm going to drop you a comment. You're going to know it. Um, stay informed, stay motivated, stay inspired. Coming up next is uh, FPUC and stay up LA for more. <laughs>